Hello, and welcome to the one year Curse Tech Extravaganza. I've been posting videos weekly for one year, and we are going to be revisiting some of the craziest decks that have occurred throughout that journey. So why don't you stick around? It's uh, it's gonna be a good time. Third air hummingbird activation. Ridiculous. Also, we're gonna be figuring out the results of these dang polls. I asked you guys questions. We're gonna we're gonna see look at the answers. One year ago on April 24th, 2023, I made my first high effort Yu-Gi-Oh! video. At the time I had 88 subscribers and uh it went pretty well. I thought it was gonna be a one-off thing. I kinda was just like, you know, just tossing it out, seeing seeing how people responded, but I don't know, I, I have a long history on YouTube. I've been posting videos ever since I was 10 years old. Here's a clip. What things would happen? Bad things. I don't know, something about me, I like making videos, it's a good time. Before this, I was a sketch comedian. I had a fairly successful sketch channel, but you might recognize me more from the Wizards with Guns. We're all Florida men. We do Florida Man things. I love those guys, and I I do like sketch, hence why I throw in some sketch aspects into into this channel. And the reason why I even posted the first episode of Curse Tech is because I felt like there was an aspect of Yu-Gi-Oh that wasn't really within the Edison scene. I felt like there was a huge competitive emphasis on Edison format, which I do like. I do like being competitive, you know, winning. Sometimes I like winning, but I also really wanted to like, you know, show off suboptimal decks on purpose. Yu-Gi-Oh, in my opinion, is about having fun. Everything else, you know, you can win the competition, you can maybe earn some money with the cards, but it's like, what are we doing? What aspects of the game do you find the most fun? Some people, they like to win. Other people like me, you know, you like to try to do something funny. You know, I like to see my opponent get a little get a little smile on their face, like see the gears in their head, like not understanding what's about to happen. And then when they realize it, oh, what a crazy thing that just happened. You know, that's what I find fun. And that comes from, you know, playing against my friends every week, you know, going into the bulk and trying to put something into your deck to make them freak out whenever you play it against them, you know? That's the part that I like the best. And I feel like that's what I want the whole channel and the whole series to encompass. I want this channel to evoke that feeling. And so here we are, one year of Curse Tech. And to look back on this time, I asked you all some questions. The first question was, what was the funniest episode of Curse Tech? I personally would probably say the Frog the Jam one. I mean, I put so much effort into that one. I had, it, it was so elaborate and crazy, but to my surprise, you all love Griggle. I only played two games with the deck. I literally, I made the deck, played one match, good to go, uploaded the video, and it resonated and it's so funny. It's kind of like that, like, you know, lightning in a bottle. It's just perfect. And so uh, I'm curious, I'm gonna bring Griggle back once again. Let's see if it can stand up to the test of time. Let's see if its power was real. If Griggle really can defeat any opponent. Let's get in to one more game with, in your opinion, the funniest deck in all of Cursed Tech, Griggle. First game of the Cursed Tech one year celebration, none other than Griggle Gaming, a fan favorite. Let's see, this is actually the first duel I tried with the deck since playing the last duel. And that last duel I won. So let's see if we can keep up the 100% Griggle win rate. Already, we're off to a good start. Air Hummingbird is just 2,500 life points. <laughs> Plus Waboku, I mean, he's probably gonna survive another turn, get more life points. Things are going pretty well. And my opponent's just gonna do quick draw dandy stuff. That That's fine with me. I don't care about that. I, that that's all good. They're gonna banish uh, the Drill Warrior and pass their turn without removing our Air Hummingbird. And so um, 1,500 more life points for free. I'll take it. And um, I'm thinking a lot about this turn. We could do Griggle Creature Swap, but you know, I kind of want to do that next turn. So I'm just going to set this Lone Fire and pass the turn. I figure this Waboku will keep it alive. They're going to do this Drill Warrior stuff. They banish it again and they tribute set a card. And then they pass back to us 
third air hummingbird activation. Ridiculous. Insane. We are now up to 12,000 life points. Oh, just kidding. 13,500 life points. Pretty impressive stuff. But you know what's even more impressive? When I summon out this Griggle from the deck, creature swap it over, they give us a level 1 token. That's a, that's a big mistake because... Um, we have seven stars, and Ancient Sacred Iron only requires a light tuner, and so they're dead. They are just dead. <laughs> Let's go. Grinkle Gaming. I mean, maybe it is actually. I've literally never lost a game with that deck. Maybe it is good. Maybe it needs to be moved up in the tier list. We gotta move on from Grinkle. I could talk about Grinkle all day. The next question I asked you all was, what was the best boss monster in all of Cursed Tech. And this one was not only the most responded to poll, but the most unanimous. People love Montage Dragon. So let's do this again. Let's bring Montage Dragon back to the playing field and see if he still has what it takes to destroy my opponent in one attack. Uh, let's get into the game. You know, when we were making the deck more competitive, we added a lot of spice, you know, a lot of a lot of weird cards, but I think the superior version of Montage plays Yubel, the ultimate nightmare. We are going first, but we have Montage plus uh, Black Rose on the next turn, so I just pass my turn, and unless we're dead, we're in a pretty good spot. My opponent's gonna do quick draw stuff yet again. Not the same opponent, but you know, you get the idea. They're gonna summon the Drill Warrior, normal summon a card trooper, mill three cards, and then they just go into the battle phase, attack us for 1900, 2400, they banish the Drill Warrior, pass their turn, but my friend, you have left a card trooper in attack position, and they're dead. I mean, I mean, we're montage game, we are just montage game. The next question I asked you all was, what was the best sketch featured on the channel? You all responded, and thankfully, in my opinion, you picked the right answer. The Halloween video was the most effort I had put into an episode of Curse Tech. I worked so hard on that one. I tried to make it as funny and as exciting as possible, and at first, the video didn't do very well. Uh, it was very low performing compared to the other videos, but over time, it's like continued to build and people keep coming back to it. And that just makes me so happy because, you know, it's hard to put like a lot of effort into a Yu-Gi-Oh video, but like the fact that it resonates with people, it makes me want to do more crazy high effort sketches in the future. It's like the Kodaris one. That one also did not do very great when I put it out, but over time it's continued to grow. And let's see if the King of the Skull Servants still has what it takes. All right, hearkening back to the Halloween episode, let's see if we can get a little cheeky OTK win. And when you draw a Magical Merchant and Veil of Darkness, that is a good chance of happening. My opponent summons the Lila, they attack into our Magical Merchant. Here is 20 cards milled. Let's go. <laughs> incredible, just incredible stuff. They can pop the Veil of Darkness, but you know what? I don't mind. They're gonna set it back row, mill three, and pass their turn. And wait, are you serious? How? How? How is this possible? I play against my opponent. They're on the king as well. Wow, I mean, who will win? The Light Sworn King deck or the Magical Merchant Veil of Darkness King deck? It really depends on who gets to go first and who gets luckier. In this game, I'm the lucky guy. I'm going to summon out this guy in attack position. They don't activate any trap cards. Then we're going to just normal summon the king. And then we're going to use another Vayu. We're going to summon out this guy. And then they Torrential Tribute. They foolishly Torrential Tribute. But as you can see, this was all a part of my plan. I will banish seven Darks to summon this guy. And all we need is ten more to get it up to 8,000. And um, I don't even know what to say. It's just, uh, it's just uh, why are these games so short? Next up, we have the most competitive deck featured on the channel. And this was another blowout. Winged Rhinos. Here is a my new deck, by the way, my, my current deck list. There it is. If you want to play Winged Rhinos, I think this is the best way to play it. But you know what? This is Cursed Tech, and this is about the evolution of Winged Rhinos. Winged Rhinos started off in that Blasting Fuse episode as just, you know, an afterthought. 
and over time that guy's grown to be my favorite card and let's continue the saga when wdnr and i were trying to fill the, the the monster spots in the deck we were going through some crazy stuff and today i want to put forth one more <laughs> crazy option for winged rhinos that i don't know if it's the best way to play it but god it is so funny let's check out one rhino stool with with a little bit of a twist let's take a little peek into the next innovation in the deck a new version i am trying out which you were about to see the star cog. <laughs> okay, hear me out. Jester Lord is insane. I'm probably gonna make a whole episode on this card, but for now, for you that have stuck around to enjoy this wonderful special, just uh, just take a moment to observe how funny this card is in Winged Rhinos. I mean, Winged Rhinos, we search through every single playable other engine to put in the deck. And maybe Jester Lord is that engine. My opponent's going to summon a Gilman. We're going to Dimension Barrier that Gilman. They set two back row and oh man, big mistake setting Solemn Judgment and D-Prison because now you just can't activate either of those. And if you activate this in the end phase, they can't do anything. And um, here is a 7,000 attack Jester Lord that will get in. No D-Prison today. <laughs> and then we're going to activate this Jar of Greed. And we draw a couple of dead cards and we just pass our turn. My opponent's going to activate this E-Call to get the Neos Alias to their hand. They're going to normal summon the Neos Alias and we are going to activate this Torrential Tribute that goes to the graveyard. They cannot activate Solemn because it's locked down. And then they pass and then they're dead. Let's go. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll, uh, we'll get into more Jester shenanigans in a future episode because that card is too funny to ignore. But for now, the moment of truth. I asked you all what the overall best episode of Curse Tech is, and you responded with the original Montage Dragon episode. This episode is everything a Curse Tech episode should be. It is funny. I mean, the constant one-shots in the dueling segment were just so funny to film and and i did do that on purpose i played quite a few games just so i could have like seven one shots in a row <laughs> that i could show off but it's just an underlooked card that does something silly that's fun and surprisingly powerful so everything you could ever dream of that is a special episode and so that's it one year of curse tech down what will happen in the next year hopefully we'll uh you know do the mbt collab I'm just kidding. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. But I also want to take some time to shout out my channel members that have just kept me going throughout this entire year. And of course, they are Marcus Willebrandt, Fabrizio Petrulli, Live, Femnar, Beamnar, Yell24. Yell and I were actually exchanging Berserk Dragon lists before Curse Tech. So huge shout out to Yell. Your Moonstone, Outback, YGO, the powerful, insane Dino Duelists themselves, D Bakes 55, Ricky, Harold, Garita, Who Read This Is Silly, Sergio, Dark Joey, EG, and Antonio Sassine. Thank you guys so much again. I mean, I love this community. I can't believe you guys are supporting me to do this, and I have so much fun doing it. I can't wait to see what the next year holds. It's gonna be a great year for Curse Tech, a great year for this channel, and thank you all so much again, and uh, I will see you in the next one. Peace.